Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba. thank you for joining me. Let's play some more Dynastic Dominance for CK2. So, before we really get started, I want to let you know that um, I did move my microphone from the previous position, and it may or may not sound different to you. Um, I'm going to have to get used to it. I've, for months, been just, you know, I'm a, I'm a perfectionist when it comes to things, and it just drives me crazy not having things work exactly how I want to. And audio balance is one of those things that when you finally get it exactly the way that you want it, um, it, it, it's terrible to have to change it, and I'm still, still dealing with moving from one location to another. So, hopefully, um, hopefully it sounds better. Um, if, if you can't see it or you can't tell, then, then that's fine. But I think it's better. I, I think I, th like, think dot 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 like an ellipsis. So, anyway, where we left off, we're still King Harald the Third, the Great of England, and uh, we're a falconer pilgrim. We should invest in technological advancement. Apparently we can get some more military tech. Yay, that's good. I want that. Uh, we can get more retinue. Now, uh, I know there's some people who still will insist, and every time I mention retinue and I say that the skirmish retinue is best, uh, people disagree and they say things like, no, 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 the cultural retinues are better, or this, uh, you know, the heavy retinue is going to be better because it'll survive in combat. <sighs> All I can tell you is I've played like 200... Not even two, no, not even, probably almost over 2,000 hours of CK2. And I can tell you from experience, no, you're wrong, it's not true. Skirmish retinue is the best. The only one that's better is the archer retinue, full archer. Um, it's just how it works. So, that is my opinion. I'm allowed to have an opinion. I'm an expert on my opinion, as Dave, Ram Dave Ramsey likes to say. So, we're in the midst of a war right now. We're trying to help out against the Bohemian League Independence War. We're on the side of the Kaiser. We are allies. I forget why. How are we allies? Magnus's daughter, Henrik's brother-in-law. So my brother-in-law. Some somebody's married. I don't. It doesn't matter. All that we're really trying to do at this point, we want to murder the French king so that my my wife's son, because I've had a couple wives, my second wife's son can end up becoming the King of England. That's how we're going to spread our dynasty there. And I have been reading your comments. I understand, and I, I kind of agree about the Empire thing. The only thing that would be nice about being able to form Britannia um, and then using that Empire tier would be that, like, let's say we want to invite... Well, I'll just give you an example. Let's say, okay, Norway. We want to put our dynasty on the seat of Norway. So we go look at Norway. We, we go here to the Kingdom of Norway. We see claimants, and then we find a claimant who's willing to come. Unfortunately, in this example, there aren't any. Okay, let's try Sweden. None. Denmark. The further into the game that you get, the more claimants there will be, generally. So, okay, so we found someone for Denmark. So let's say that we want to invite Prince Thorgis, Thorgils, right? So we invite him to court, we grant him a minor barony, we press his claim for Denmark, and now we have a king of Denmark beneath us, within our empire. Because he's now within our empire, we can catch him doing something naughty, and then revoke his kingdom and grant it to our son. Just like that. Now all of a sudden our son is the king of Denmark. And then we grant Denmark independence. That would be the advantage to being an emperor. If we don't do that, then we have no ability to do that. The only way to put our sons on other thrones is to do it through the marriage game. Because if we try to press his claim after giving him land in our holding, like over here, then he would just become the king of Denmark who happens to own some land that he shouldn't have in England. And then that's it. So it's almost impossible, I think, to really layer the land with our dynasty unless we become an emperor. It would take forever to do the marriage way. So what I think I'm going to do is we're going to form the empire, um, but we're not going to keep Ireland, Scotland, or Wales. We're going we're gonna to give it all away. Assuming we can, you know, actually come to think of it, we might not be allowed to give away du jour kingdoms or grant them their independence within the empire let's see if we can figure that out like let's just say random person you I wanted to grant independence is there any King Harold must be your liege yes must be at peace he is not a Catholic du jour vassal okay so yeah we won't if we if we form the empire we will not be able to get rid of Ireland or Scotland or Wales. Well, we might end up doing it anyway. I don't know. I just feel like the, the ability to expand is is important. Don't you think? 
Doesn't that seem like the best way to do it? Hmm. I don't know. Let's just play for a bit, see what happens. Right now we're, we're trying to kill some Count of Powys. I have a son who became a charismatic negotiator, very nice. Uh, we can marry him off to a Holy Roman Empress. A princess of the Holy Roman Empire, I guess. Probably a more appropriate way of saying it. Uh, I think we've already done that. We have another princess of France here. And we have a princess of Navarra. A princess of the Pechenegs. Hmm. I think we double up on France just to make sure that at some point we end up in control of France. Once we have France, we'll have a good, strong ally that we can use against the Holy Roman Empire. And the fun thing about doing this dynastic dominance thing is that we're going to end up with tons of wars. When you have outside allies, you end up getting called into a lot of wars. We have 21 allies, many of which are capable of calling us to war. So that should be fun. Uh, I have discovered a plot where Dukas seeks to kill Prince Godwine. Mr. Godwine. Stop that. Meanwhile, that's right, that's why we're trying to kill you, because we have a truce with you. Come on, kill the man. I want to attack. Meanwhile, Scotland. Any claimants to Scotland that we might be able to do something with? Nope. Crusader kings, Christian pilgrims to the Holy Land suffer all manner of abuse and the routes are not safe. In order to protect the pilgrims and secure Jerusalem for Christ the faithful, His Holiness Pope Benedict X has accepted the possibility of an outright invasion by joint Christian forces. This signals a new era of large-scale Christian holy wars, the Crusades. So we're in the year 1091. Um, apparently we have not yet had our first crusade for Jerusalem, so that'll happen soon. And that'll be our, uh, there we go, there it is, crusade for Jerusalem, so it's been declared. This is an opportunity for us to possibly get our second kingdom. We can do that and grant it to one of our children. So we definitely want to immediately jump onto the crusade before he even responds to our our request to join. We're going to raise up all of our troops and we're going to rally them probably to Essex and then we're going to rally up the boats send them to Essex as well and then we're going to go talk to the Pope and say yep we want to join and we are going to go win this crusade first to join first to arrive is the easiest way to secure well first of all you have to win the crusade naturally in order for anybody to get territory but um, just joining first and being there first is one of the best ways to accrue score um, so nobody has any score yet. In order to obtain cr score, you have to like be fighting in battles and like be in the war goal, like get to the du jour borders of Jerusalem. So unfortunately, the Pope is there first, so he's going to start immediately accruing points. See how that, that points are ticking up? And there's likely to be... Yep, connect. It's funny how the Italian... Or sorry, the Ireland... Irish miners almost always join right away. I mean, they are quick. Quick, quick, quick. And they've already lost. Fortunately, we have 15,000 troops, so... There's 20 there, but we're going to be able to take advantage of, hopefully, their lack of mobility to, to do all right. We might need to wait for reinforcements, actually. So, I'm not liking the fact that we're suffering attrition here. 8.2% is a bit much for my liking. Let's go ahead and grab up, say, 5,000 of the troops. Keep them on the boats. We have become a crusader. That's good. And uh, we're just going to kind of hang out here and try to siege this this target. And he's probably going to send his men back over. But um, maybe we can even afford to try to siege two at once. What do you want? Be the war against the tyranny of Kaiser Magnus of the Holy Roman. Sure, of course. Apparently we're at war with Poland. So the Fatimid dynasty, how you doing, buddy? How many troops do you have? He has 20,000. We've got 15, so... If he actually comes with a full force, we could be in trouble. Meanwhile, we're going to go ahead and... Um, select one of these armies, and then we're going to appoint like all of our family members... To give them all the Crusader trait. All of our males. See how they're all getting flagged as... as uh, Crusaders. 
We're also going to give, like, like pretty much everyone. Every male that we can, we're going to just say, Hey, you need to be a crusader, you need to be a crusader. You're going to war, peoples. And you're going to like it. Here comes the main army. Um, if we split this army, we're going to end up giving up control of the siege to the papacy, I think. Can we take him on? Probably. I think we'd actually be okay. And we have a new anti-pope. Alright, so... Looks like we're going to suffer some more attrition. This is going to be, like, the main battle. If we can't win this battle, we're in a lot of trouble. So this one, we actually need really good commanders in charge. Let's put the 22. Let's put this guy. Notice how they all have that, that crusader trait. We want to get as many of them as possible, though. Because it improves everyone's mar uh, martial score, but then also, and this is the most important factor, look at his opinion of me. We've got the um, both crusader plus 30. So every character that we send on this crusade is going to... We're all going to love each other, because we went to war. It's a big, big war, and we're all going to be bestest buddies. And... Uh, Hopefully it's amazing. So we got the mountain defense bonus. Excellent. Let's slow the game down a little bit. Um, they have more troops than we did. Now it's equal. Um, unfortunately, we ended up with the wrong commanders somehow. In the chaos of the battle, like we're still in the battle, but we have uh, the seven martial character leading the center flank instead of the 22. I don't know how that happened. Please don't lose because of that silly reason. Oh, God. Okay, we're down to just two flanks remaining. He's got a numeric advantage, though. Although the 2,800 here that are, are part of this army are not actually fighting. So it's actually 3,300 to 3,500. We do have more morale and a better commander. Um, he has the defense bonus from the mountains. This guy has a morale dam uh, damage modifier because he is cruel. No, he's not. He's brave and a trickster. Where our character has um, morale damage, morale defense, and extra just regular defense. He's patient. So I think we should win. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to win. I hope. Oh, God. It's, that is not fair. You can't beat me. That's bullshit. Ugh. There's no way that that should have happened. And now we have dangerous factions because we lost that battle and we lost most of that war. Now, fortunately, if the crusade ends up succeeding, we have 126,000 contribution points so far. Um, and anyone else that comes in, there's very few people who are participating, actually, um, will cause us to win. Why are you not leading the center flank, you dummy? So what we might need to do is actually, like, retreat and restore our levy. Maybe even hire mercenaries or something if possible. Ugh, can't believe we lost. If he comes at us into the mountains, we should win for a second time. Even though we lost, we actually did... <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. We actually did okay. We're going to just move back into Sur. And, uh... Even take on the 65 men if possible as well. I mean, if he comes... Oh, no mountain defense bonus. This time we do have the 22 martial character. And uh, our right flank gets trashed right away. Our center flank has far more troops, but he's got a flanking bonus now. Our left flank is holding and succeeding. Now they get to flank. Come on, man. Hold it together. You should win. Join, win, good. Two on one, we win. Excellent. Now, he is retreating to Tiberius, so we'll go run him down. Oh, shoot! There's another 5,000 men there. We're screwed. We are screwed! Can my spymaster bring me any good news? It has come to my attention that you are the leader of a plot to kill Count Belduin of Powys. I find this most fascinating. So some countess underneath my son um, wants me to pay her. I, I won't tolerate it. Who cares? You can tell everyone about my plot. doesn't matter. We have a nephew. Yep, so unfortunately the uh, the Timurids here, or the Fatimids, sorry, they have quite a few troops on defense. And, you know, there's probably other people. The headmaster of the Hashishanin. Hashishan. Hashishan. Has 4,000 troops. We're going to lose this whole army. So there goes our retinue. Good opportunity to rebuild it, right? Let's just disband the boats at sea. I don't want to send them all the way home. We, uh, well, I guess we can. We're not. It's not our actual lobby. It's our boats. We can afford to let them travel. The war against the tyranny has ended. The Cassus Belli is no longer valid. Actually, you know what? Can we retreat some of the army? Yeah, we got 1,600 men. 
Okay, well, we send him home, and we hope that soon some more people will join the war. God, that's that's a crushing blow. I was expecting at least f a few people to join the crusade. And now they uh, are declaring what? Time to lower crown authority. They have 110% of the strength. Lower crown authority in a Wales. Implement limited crown authority in Wales. Yeah, that's fine. It's just Wales. It's not England. So, whatever you want, Welsh people. Okay, well, the failed crusade is uh, unfortunate, but um, Earl of Somerset is trying to fabricate a claim on the Duchy of Wessex. Let's uh, imprison you. He's going to flee to a different court before we can capture him, and then we'll ransom him back, get some money. We can use that money to maybe hire some mercenaries and go win this war. We still have a very strong faction against us, the Independence Faction. Um, it's probably the same jerks that tried to lower crown law in uh, in this province, in this this kingdom over here. We can grant him an honorary title, then probably send him a gift. Eh, he's kind of expensive. This guy's all upset. He desires the duchy, and he's ambitious. Desires the duchy of Dehuebarth. Well, we don't own it ourselves, and I don't actually want it. So you know what? Why don't you go ahead and have it? Sounds fine. That means that the independence faction should drop off the face of the map almost instantly. In fact, we'll also give you an extra title just for fun. Independence faction around? No, it's not. Well, it is, but now it's gone. Independence is no longer an issue. We have a kinsman that needs an educator. Let's train up a military man. Why not? Got a whole bunch of crusaders. We're still waiting for other people to join up. Fortunately, our retinues did not die. Looks like we still have... Um, it's hard to say. Looks like four, five, six. Six of them. Because we've got 100 infantry times. So yeah. So we managed to salvage a few of the retinue. Let's train up a few more. My nephew. You're not even of my dynasty. I don't care about you. So hopefully a few more people will join the crusade and then we can re we can go back down there again with a, a, re a renewed army and win the crusade. We've already gotten enough contribution score that even if like everyone in Europe joined, god look at that, 200,000 and the Pope only contributed 3,000. Man, they hightailed it out of there pretty quick. I bet the Pope ends up white piecing. But we did, we almost won. At the very least we got a lot of uh... A lot of crusaders flagged. My son became a crusader, right? No, of course he didn't. Of course I didn't have time to, to get him and <laughs> give him that trait. Naturally. Okay, well I'm going to take a break here. Hopefully we will do a little bit better in the next video. And we'll continue our plotting to kind of combine Wales. And then also we can eventually start working on France. So thanks for watching everyone. See you again soon.